Hello, I'm Nona Melkonian with SFGov TV. Along with the League of Women Voters of San Francisco, I'm here to discuss Proposition G, a ballot measure that will be before the voters on Tuesday, November 4th. Proposition G would impose an additional tax on the total sale price of certain multi-unit residential properties that are sold within five years of purchase or transfer. This additional tax would apply to sales occurring on or after January 1, 2015. This additional tax would not apply in the following circumstances. The property is a single-family house or condominium and does not include an in-law unit. An owner of the property, including a tenancy and common unit, has used it as the primary residence for at least one year immediately before the sale. The property contains more than 30 separate residential units. The property is sold for an amount equal to or less than what the seller paid for the property. The property is sold within one year of a property owner's death. The property is legally restricted to low and middle income households. The property is newly built housing. The property meets the following criteria. It contains no more than two dwelling units. The seller applied on or before July 1, 2014 for a building permit for a project with a total construction cost of $500,000 or more and the last permit was issued no more than a year before the sale of the property, or the sale of the property is exempt from the existing transfer tax. This measure would also authorize the Board of Supervisors to create additional exemptions from both the existing transfer tax and this proposed additional tax for properties that are subject to affordability-based restrictions. If you vote yes, you want the city to impose an additional tax of between 14% and 24%, on the total sale price of certain multi-unit residential properties that are sold within five years of purchase or transfer, subject to certain exceptions. If you vote no, you do not want the city to impose this additional tax. I'm here with Claudia Torado, a teacher from the San Francisco Unified School District and a proponent of Proposition G. We're also joined by Marcy Berry, Vice Chair of the Libertarian Party of San Francisco and an opponent of the measure. Thank you both for being here. I'd like to start with some opening remarks from each of you. Marcy, would you like to speak first? Thank you. Thank you for having us here. Um, the Libertarian Party of San Francisco has recommended a no vote on this proposition. And the, there are two main reasons. There are many, but two main ones. The first one is that speculation cannot be controlled by legislation designed to bring about a political income, uh, outcome. You, you can't do that. There are market forces that are going to be there, and you can't do away with them. Uh, the second situation is that not only is Proposition G useless, it harms the innocents. For example, people who need to leave the market, the, the tenant market or the, the uh, landlord market, in order to get a new job somewhere else. You know, you you're harming that person who has absolutely nothing to do with speculation or supposing a person gets sick and needs to sell the home before the time. So there are consequences. Thank you. Thank you. Claudia, would you like to give your opening statement? Yes, Proposition G does not um, tax um, single homeowners, does not tax uh, condominium owners, it doesn't tax tenancy in common uh, owners. It does tax um, speculators who buy and flip properties within five years, uh, speculators who buy uh, uh, rental units uh, and who are not interested in being landlords, who are just interested in a quick profit and, um, and are using the Ellis Act to evict uh, members of the community, uh, teachers like myself. And I am for Proposition G uh, so that this will stop uh, speculators from buying and flipping properties and um, and then it, it will encourage uh, long-term investors, um, people who really are in the rental uh, business and who are landlords and not just making a quick buck on people's homes and communities. Thank you. Claudia says it's a disservice to the tenants to be displaced. Ms. Berry, will the passage of this measure increase home ownership or long-term tenancy in San Francisco? I doubt it. And again, for the same reason that, you know, what the supervisors are trying to, some supervisors, some voted against it, uh, are trying to do is to go against things that are the laws of the market. 
you know, the laws of the market cannot be changed. It's just like gravity laws. And so when you say, okay, you know, we just tell speculators they can't do something. Well, speculators are the risk takers. They'll continue doing it. And so there won't be impact in that regard. And so the, the long-term people who are intending to be long-term people are the same long-term people that are intending to be long-term people now. So nothing has changed as far, except that the tenants are going to pay more rent because the, the cost of the tax is going to be passed on to them, and there'll be consequences for people who are total innocents. As far as the idea that these are LLCs or corporations, no, they're not. You know, you can have maybe a, a worker in Silicon Valley that has bought a little property, and uh, he's not an LLC, he's not a corporation, he's just a, a person renting something just to make ends meet. And so then you have, say, that same tech worker needs to move. You know, the job is very volatile in these days. You can't stay put. So there you are. Uh, this is draconian and can't be done. Thank you. Claudia, any thoughts on Ms. Berry's comments? Um, yes, the, the, the real estate market is, uh, can't be regulated. Uh, and of course, that people do want to make a profit from 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 a rental unit and a rental apartment, um, and they are making a profit from the rental unit. It is an investment property. It's um, it's meant to be kept as an investment property, and um, the continuity of our city is uh, based on uh, on rentals. A lot of our San Franciscan citizens are renting, including people from Silicon Valley mm -hmm. who are trying to make ends meet. Um, however, the speculators are using the Ellis Act as a loophole and are using it to evict people very quickly and uh, and they are affecting our, our city. Our, our, our working class is, is no longer uh, able to afford to live here. Immigrants are no longer able to afford to here to live here. Teachers, are one third of our teachers commute in and out of San Francisco every day. So it takes away from our community. The speculators are taking away from our community and they're using the Ellis Act as a loophole. So it's not long-term investors and it's definitely not new housing that's being affected. I mean, we need housing and because we need housing, we need um, these uh, units to stay on the market and not be changed by speculators so quickly because our city can't adjust. Thank you. Thank you both for your comments and your time today. We have a little bit of time left and I'd like to use this time to get some closing remarks from each of you. Since Ms. Berry spoke first, would you like to speak and give any uh, closing remarks? Uh, yes, I'd like um, everyone to uh, read up on Proposition G. There's a lot of um, false uh, uh, statements being spread by very wealthy realtor investors. And this Proposition G is a grassroots uh, proposition that um, was um, proposed because of the evictions that are going on in San Francisco. It's very common to see your neighborhood change within a year and your friends be displaced and your uh, members of the community be displaced and it's very frightening to see families in San Francisco um, frightened by the changes and um, it's just a, a grassroots um, proposition and I hope that people do their research and really understand that it's here to benefit everybody in San Francisco. Thank you. Ms. Barry, any final thoughts? Yes, uh, my heart indeed goes out to the people who are displaced, to the tenants who f are fearful of course. However, our point is that that is life. And therefore, whenever there is a, an economic change in any area, you're going to have a great deal of evolution, a great deal of changes that need to take place. Need, people need to welcome change, not fear it. And uh, for example, the tenants that uh, sacrificed and agitated for this Proposition G are going to be very disappointed because none of the things that you mentioned that they fear that, that is, is affecting them, affecting teachers, affecting uh, low-income workers, 
uh, none of that is going to change because like I said, speculators are risk takers. They are just like nature will find a way, profit will find a way. Thank you very much. We hope that this discussion has been informative. For more information on this and other ballot measures in this year's election, please visit the San Francisco Elections website at sfelection.org. Remember, early voting is available at City Hall Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. You can also vote at City Hall on the two weekends before Election Day. And if you don't vote early, be sure to vote on Tuesday, November 4th.